there is currently a great deal of research interest in the development of metal organic frameworks for the task of CO2 capture from flue gases. In a recent uh, paper published in Advanced uh, Functional Materials 2023, a group of researchers have um, suggested the use of anion pillared MOFs in particular, TIF6 copper TPA for CO2 capture from uh, flue gases. There are a large number of uh, advantages to using um, TIF6 copper TPA. This includes uh, high CO2 capacity, excellent CO2 N2 selectivity, high thermal stability, and chemical stability in acid solution and acidic atmosphere, as well as uh, modest adsorption heat for allowing facile regeneration. Briefly put, you may say TIF6 copper TPA encompasses all the good things in life. My presentation today has the uh, limited objective of um, showing how the uh, CO2 and nitrogen separation efficiency of um, TIF6 copper TPA may be evaluated on the basis of information on urinary isotherms. In essence, what I'm going to present today is a tutorial on the calculations of um, isosteric heats of absorption, absorption selectivities, and uh, simulation of breakthroughs. We begin by uh, examining the isotherms for CO2 and nitrogen. Measurements um, of these isotherms have been reported at uh, a variety of temperatures for both gas molecules. And um, as I have explained in previous presentations on my YouTube channel, fitting of urinary isotherms and the spreading pressure concept, I prefer to uh, fit the urinary isotherms at various temperatures simultaneously by use of um, the Langmuir model or the dual site Langmuir model or the dual site Langmuir Freundlich model with temperature dependent uh, parameters. And uh, I uh, use the uh, Occam's razor philosophy in uh, choosing the uh, proper model to use. And this philosophy is based on the concept that uh, do not complicate things beyond necessity. If the simplest model works, use the simplest model. Only increase the degree of complexity if the uh, data demands it. Accordingly, I fit the uh, nitrogen isotherms with a single site Langmuir model and, uh, and the uh, CO2 isotherms with a dual site Langmuir model. The uh, parameters are presented here in this table and for each guest the isotherms at all temperatures are fitted simultaneously with three parameters in the case of nitrogen, six parameters in the case of uh, CO2. Um, this fitting I do using the Excel solver. Um, indeed, for um, any given example, I spend about um, an hour or maybe even two or three hours trying to uh, find the uh, best fit, best in my 
reading of the situation. It should be the simplest model and it should fit the uh, results uh, with a high degree of accuracy. I uh, refer you to my previous uh, presentation on this topic, but uh, let's proceed with these uh, isotherm fits to determine the isosteric heat absorption and the absorption selectivities. From the um, isotherm fits shown on the previous slide, the isosteric heat absorption may be determined analytically. Now, in the simplest case of a single side Langmuir model, it's easy to derive an analytic expression for QST. In even for a dual site Langmuir model, you can determine it uh, analytically. For a dual site Langmuir Freundlich model, you need to uh, perhaps use uh, Mathematica or Maple to determine an analytic expression for the isosteric heat of absorption. I've done all that and uh, programmed that into Excel. The uh, QST for CO2 and nitrogen used from the um, isotherm fits are shown here. Red for CO2, blue for nitrogen. The uh, same adsorption isotherm fits can be used to determine the uh, adsorption selectivity using the ideal adsorbed solution theory. I beg your pardon. In the ideal adsorbed solution theory, the partial pressure of um, any component in the uh, gas phase, PI, is related to the mole fraction of that component in the adsorbed phase inside the metal organic framework by this expression, which is an analog of the uh, Raoult's law where PI superscript zero is the sorption pressure for component I. The adsorption selectivity is the uh, ratio of the component loadings divided by the ratio of the corresponding partial pressures. And this works out to be the ratio of the sorption pressure for component two divided by the sorption pressure for component one. I refer you to my uh, presentation on the IAST for mixed adsorption equilibrium for further explanation on the, the uh, tenets that must be followed for the IAST to hold. The uh, isotherm fits at various temperatures are used to uh, determine the adsorption selectivities at uh, 298 Kelvin, 323 Kelvin and 348 Kelvin. We note that the uh, selectivity decreases with increasing temperature. This is a common observation. This paper in Advanced Functional Materials 2023 also presents uh, experimental data on the breakthroughs for 1585 mixtures of carbon dioxide nitrogen at three different temperatures, 298 Kelvin, 323 Kelvin, and uh, 348 Kelvin. These experiments were conducted in the laboratory in a tube with an inside diameter of 4.6 millimeters, pack length of 50 millimeters, with an inlet gas flow rate of 5 milliliters per minute and the mass of absorbent in the tube is 0 0.55 grams. I now uh, wish to explain to you how uh, these experiments may be simulated to uh, compare with the breakthrough experiments. I refer you also to my uh, presentation evaluating MOF using breakthrough experiments that is available on my uh, YouTube channel. For simulating the uh, breakthroughs, we need, need to determine uh, a variety of parameters that are used in uh, breakthrough simulations. 
and for a description of the uh, methodology I use, you, I use for transient breakthrough simulations, I uh, refer you to my presentation titled Transient Breakthrough Simulations. The first step is to, uh, to collect the data that is uh, required for performing the uh, breakthrough simulations. Rho rep represents the framework density of the uh, MOF for TIF6 copper TPA. The framework density is 1020 kilograms per cubic meter. The volume of adsorbent in the bed is the mass of adsorbent divided by the framework density. If epsilon is the bed porosity, the uh, Factor 1 minus epsilon is the volume of adsorbent in the bed divided by the total volume of the, of the tube. And the total volume of the tube is the uh, cross-sectional cross area of the tube, which is pi times the internal diameter squared divided by 4 times the length of the pack section. So this gives you the uh, fraction of the bed that is occupied by the uh, metal organic framework and the bed porosity is 1 minus uh, that uh, quantity. An important uh, variable in transient breakthrough simulation is the superficial gas velocity, which is the inlet uh, gas flow rate divided by the uh, cross-sectional area of the tube and the interstitial gas velocity is the superficial gas velocity divided by the uh, porosity of the bed. With these uh, parameters I can uh, carry out the breakthrough simulations ignoring the uh, influence of intracrystalline diffusion and uh, for the three temperatures, 298, 323 Kelvin, and 348 degree Kelvin, the uh, breakthrough simulations are shown here. If I compare these uh, breakthrough simulation data with the corresponding uh, breakthrough experiments, there is a, a excellent agreement between the two sets. So, uh, this is how I normally uh, um, evaluate the uh, separation efficacy of a given morph for a given separation task. Uh, 